Today, I want to talk about waiting. Nobody likes waiting, but in this video, I want to share with you how we experience growth while we're waiting. Make sure to stick around all the way to the very end of the video because not only am I going to share with you how we grow, but I'm also going to give you a surefire key to unlocking that growth. We all hate waiting, don't we? And here's proof of that. You see this? This is a plane from 100 years ago. Now look at this. This is a plane from now. Now for another example. Here's this. This is a phone from 100 years ago. And this is a phone from now. As you can see, they've changed very drastically and their capabilities have advanced more and more. You know, if you're watching this on your phone, go ahead and give us a like. And if you're not, give us a subscribe. And no matter where you're watching this, go ahead and turn that bell on so you know every time we make a new post. You see, technology moves fast. You know why these objects have changed so much in the past 100 years? It's because we're impatient, we want stuff faster, we want it to grow, and we want it more convenient. I'm sure you heard this, but the smartphone that's in your hands or that you see your parents have has more computing power than what the computers had that helped NASA land on the moon in 1969. That's wild. I can think we can all agree that waiting is the worst. And because of things like technology, we have grown more and more impatient as a society. Like when we walk into Chipotle and the line is long, or when someone takes too long to reply to us, or the worst of all, having slow internet. Go ahead and comment down below. What do you hate waiting on the most and why? Let's go to John 11 together. You can hit the link below for the digital notes to follow along as you're watching in the playlist link right here. And if you've already seen our past videos, you know of David's story where he chose control and Joseph's story, where he responds to the situation with confidence in God. See, this is the bottom line. Waiting can lead to transformation if we let it. One truth I'm more and more convinced of every day is that it's rare for things to go as we want it. It's rare to be able to have a family dinner when you have a busy family, or have a perfect game where you're playing your absolute best and nothing goes wrong, or when you have a day where just nothing unexpected happens. There's no unexpected tests, or unexpected problems that you have with friends or family, or just any little inconveniences. And that's why we get so happy when things like this happen. However, if we come to the fact and understand that hard times will happen, then we'll need to learn how we should respond when we face them. A man named Lazarus was sick. He lived in Bethany with his sisters, Mary and Martha. This is the Mary who later poured the expensive perfume on the Lord's feet and wiped them with her hair. Her brother Lazarus is sick. So the two sisters sent a message to Jesus telling him, Lord, your dear friend is very sick. But when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, it happened for the glory of God, so that the Son of God, Jesus, will receive glory from this. So although Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for the next two days. Finally, he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. So he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sakes, I'm glad I wasn't there. For now, you will really believe. Come, let's go see him. Thomas, nicknamed the twin, said to his disciples, let's go too and die with Jesus. When Jesus arrived at Bethany, he was told Lazarus had already been in his grave for four days. Bethany was only a few miles down the road from Jerusalem, and many of the people had come to console Martha and Mary in their loss. When Martha got word that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary stayed in the house. Mary said to Jesus, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask. This passage begins in the town of Bethany, which is where Lazarus lives with his sisters, Mary and Martha. A few things you should know about this group of people is Jesus is well acquainted with their family. In fact, they'd be considered dear family friends. Their house is a home away from home for Jesus and his disciples. Imagine being Mary and Martha, Jesus' dear friends. They're probably thinking or saying to themselves, Jesus will be here any minute. Jesus can help. And then Jesus didn't show up. All they could do was wait. You see, sometimes, Following Jesus messes up our plans. Like in verse four, when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, it happened for the glory of God, God's plan, so that the Son of God will receive the glory from this. So although Mary and Martha had a plan, it was Jesus' plan that ultimately succeeded. So this is a weird verse, don't you think? Not only does Jesus remain where he was for two more days, look back at verse six if you wanna see it for yourself, but he makes a confusing statement. When Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. What does that mean? He's already died. I would imagine that Mary and Martha are feeling pretty frustrated right now. Not only can Jesus help, 
But he's their friend. Friends should be there in hard times, shouldn't they? You see, we've all felt frustration at times before while waiting on God, right? So go ahead and put a comment down below if you've ever been frustrated, because we're not alone. I know for me, personally, I used to not have the best group of friends. And God gave me chances, but he eventually cut them off from my life. At first, I was angry and confused. Why, God, would you cut off my only friends? It wasn't until later I fully grasped why. Although I knew they weren't good influences, I still hung out with them because it's what I wanted to do with my plan for myself in my selfish ways. However, ultimately, God's plan was for him to cut off those friends. And when that happened, I was in a season of loneliness because I didn't have any other friends or anyone else that I was really close to like that. However, God used that time in my life to get my priorities straight. He helped me get in the word more and fix my spiritual walk with him and showed me that my past ways were stupid and I was being disobedient to him. And he ultimately grew me as a person so much more and blessed me with a friend group that glorifies him and helps me stay on the track. I had to wait a while for new friends, but in that waiting, God transformed me. However, I don't think waiting now or waiting in Mary and Martha's day and age was a popular pastime. But today, our current culture has made waiting way worse. Sometimes, God allows pain and suffering for us to attach our hope to Him, not to things of this world. Look at verse 14 and 15 with me again. So He told them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and for your sakes, I'm glad I wasn't there. For now, you will really believe. Come, let's go see Him. And the sister's grief, can you believe what Jesus just said? We need to stop looking at our bad circumstances as something that God has done to us. He's not doing those things to us but he might be doing something through you or in you. Go ahead, comment down below. How many times have you gone through something and didn't know why, but later someone else went through the same exact thing and you were able to help them? Notice that Martha isn't doubting God's power. She's questioning his timing. She's ticked off that he didn't show up when she wanted him to show up. I believe that's our issue more often than God's issue. Now go ahead and bow your heads if you want to. I'm gonna do a quick little prayer. God, even though you haven't acted in the way I expected, you're still God. You're all powerful and I'm not. You're all knowing and I'm not. You're God and I'm not, amen. You see, she's showing that trust in Jesus, not things, not circumstances, not people, is the key to unlocking spiritual transformation in the face of hard times. Jesus is more concerned about your character than your comfort. Now, if you've grown up in church, you probably know that eventually Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. You can read the rest of that link down right below in the digital notes or check it out in your own time in John 11, 22 through 44. Waiting can lead to transformation, but here's the key, if we let it. If I were to ask you, can you trust God? I feel like most of us would answer, of course. I think that perhaps the better, more clear question is, will you continue to hope in him even when his timing seems off? Because the truth about spiritual transformation is that it doesn't take place when we get what we want. It often takes place in the middle of the waiting. I know I've said it, but I'm gonna say it again because I want it to be in your head. Waiting can lead to transformation if we let it. But here's the good news. We're not alone in our waiting because even when hard times come, you may never have thought about this before, but Jesus had to wait as well. In Romans 8, 32, it says this, he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. God didn't spare Jesus, but he handed him over to the benefit of all of us. Why do I bring this up? Because once he was handed over, he went from being proactive to waiting, waiting to experience death on the cross. So we do not have an unsympathetic high priest. We have someone who understands us. Jesus understands what we've been through. And because of his sacrifice on the cross, we're able to give our lives to him and ask Jesus for the forgiveness of our sins. Now, what's one practical way to wait patiently. Well, let's see. John 17, 1 says, After Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. We see that when Jesus knew he was waiting to get arrested, he prays. And later on the cross, when he's waiting to die, he prays. So I encourage you, when you're in a season of waiting, to pray in expectation, knowing that God hears you. The reason I bring this up is because I feel like oftentimes we are confused with what God is doing or why he closed a door we thought he would open. And our thoughts and emotions bounce back and forth kind of like this. You see, kids running around in a glass maze is kind of hilarious. But there's an example to this. There's a reason I put this on here. Because life can feel like this sometimes and we have no idea what's going on. Life is hard and confusing and God will close doors and you'll bounce back from door to door really confused, really trying to question, why are you doing this, God? And it's because it's not our plan that's gonna see, it's his plan. And we can trust and hope that God is ultimately in control and has our best interest, painting our life and our picture to fit his perfect will and way. Waiting can lead to transformation if we let it. And so we have to hope, trust, and pray to God, even in our waiting, 
that he is caring about us and our well-being and our story. Dear God, I know I am a sinner and I am sorry for my sins and the life that I have lived. I need your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus died for me and my sins and I am now willing to turn away from my old life and submit to you right now. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus rose from the grave and defeated death. Because of that, I am safe from my sins. I accept him as my savior and am ready to walk a new life. If you prayed that prayer, we'd love to know. And in fact, we have a video of next steps for you right here on the screen. So go ahead and tap on that and I'll see you over there.